Good morning, friends. So glad you could be with me today as we continue in study of God's Word in the Unfolding the Word series together. We're in the midst of First Peter. Today I want to pick up our reading in verse 18 and read on through verse 21, which is a segment we're going to be looking at today and tomorrow. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. We've been looking in this portion of 1 Peter at the challenge to conduct ourselves with fear. We talked about the nature of that fear and reverence and awe of God and the challenge that God says for us as his redeemed children that we are to live our lives as exiles in this world in that fashion. Yesterday we were looking at two motives for that commitment to conduct ourselves with godly fear. Uh, the truth of our inescapable accountability, and also realizing the cost of our salvation. Now, it's that cost issue, what it really took to save us, to redeem us, that these verses that we're looking at today pick up on, and we're going to investigate a bit further. Peter says, this is the cost of our salvation. Meditating on the cost, knowing that we were ransomed, not with perishable things, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Reflecting on that, meditating on that, is intended by God to shake us out of spiritual complacency. It's intended by God to shake us out of spiritual carnality. It's part of the reason that the scripture lays out for us in the New Testament the importance of the church as it gathers to, with frequency, share together in the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11, the sharing of the bread, the sharing of the cup. <clears throat> because in so doing, we are reminding ourselves of the foundations for our salvation, but at the same time, reminding ourselves of the tremendous cost to break us to make us free of accountability before God. All of that is intended to help motivate us to conduct ourselves with godly fear, godly reverence in the midst of this life. Certainly, that's the idea in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, where it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now, what was that price that you were bought with? The precious blood of shed by the Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf. <laughs> we're not our own any longer as a result. We were bought with that price. And the intent of God is that we would glorify God with our body as a result. That we would live reverent lives as a result. That we would live holy lives as a result. God is not interested in us com being complacent or carnal in our orientation of life. He wants us growing. That's what it's all about. Now, in these verses that I read to you, verses 18 to 21, we find four principles that increase our appreciation of the cost, the wonderful, amazing cost of the salvation that we've received, of the redemption that has been ours. In the first of those, we'll pick up on and build on today. Principle number one, we need to appreciate the wonder in the fact that we've been ransomed. Verse 18, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers. You and I, as redeemed children of God, were ransomed. The Greek word is luthro which means to release someone upon payment of a ransom. That's why it's translated this way, ransomed. <laughs> you and I were all in a place where we needed ransomed. We are all slaves in that sense. 
John chapter 8, verses 33 to 34, tells us, as Jesus was speaking to the Jews, that we are all slaves of sin. That's the truth. The Jews were saying, well, no, we've not been slaves to anyone. And God says, no, no, all of us were slaves to sin. And that slavery created a hopeless situation for us. Ephesians chapter 2, if you read that chapter as a total chapter, it underscores for us the, the um, sad and disastrous condition that all of us were in that we needed ransomed from. It describes us in Ephesians 2 as being dead in the midst of our sin. It describes us as being by nature objects of wrath, as accountability for that sin. We saw also in that chapter 2 of, of Ephesians that we are without hope and without God in this world. That is the picture. We all need freedom. <laughs> we all need ransomed. We need taken out of that circumstance. Whether a person admits it or realizes it, that's the truth. And God is saying, review these biblical truths, because if you realize you've been ransomed, <laughs> then that has an effect on your orientation of life. You see, the problem that everyone faces is the problem of sin, the penalty of sin, and the restoring of relationship with God as a result, because sin by its nature separates us from God. It demands a penalty that no one could ultimately pay. And without the payment for sin being made, it leads to a life in an eternity cast out of God's presence. The forefathers, all the past generations, had no answer to that, and neither do the people in our current era. Their answers are futile answers, is the way it puts it here. They only pass on to us the futile answers. The idea that somehow we solve our problem of sin by trying to turn over a new leaf, trying to do our best, uh, going through some religious uh, ceremonies and so forth. No, no. The scripture says that's not adequate. That's not going to solve the problem. We need to be ransomed with a price that was paid by another. That price, as we read about it, we were bought with a price is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I needed rescued. You and I needed redeemed. We were in the midst of a slavery and an accountability. We were hopeless in the framework of both things, the slavery to sins and also the accountability for those sins. We needed a deliverer. We needed a redeemer. We needed one who would pay a ransom for us and get us out of the captivity. And that's exactly what we found in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, the same ideas are being unfolded for us. In verses 13 to 14, it says this, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, and he has transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. We needed rescued. We needed redeemed. <laughs> we needed ransomed. In Christ, that is what occurred. And God says, listen, I want you reflecting on this. The more that you appreciate the need you had to be ransomed, the more you will appreciate the ransomer. <laughs> The more you realize the impossibility of the sin that you had to answer for and the solution that you could not come up with, the more you will appreciate the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remembering who we were helps us to appreciate who we are. And in appreciating who we are, people bought with a price people who passed out of judgment into life because of what Christ has done for us, motivates us, is it intended to motivate us, to want to now live our lives, conducting ourselves in the reverence of the Lord and in holiness. Is it having that effect in you? <laughs> I pray that it is. I pray it has that effect in me. As day by day, we remind ourselves of the wonder that we were bought with a price and our life is no longer our own. And that price 
was nothing less than the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, listen, we're going to pick up on that precious blood a bit more tomorrow, Lord willing, as we look at the second of these principles. Principle one, appreciate that we needed ransomed. Principle number two, that ransom required the very life of the Lord Jesus to be paid. God bless.